So the question is, what do we do this year? Well, we are hoping that uh, some of you would um, have a look at our books, s uh, have a look and see what we are talking about. If it makes sense, and I believe that it will make sense, we are not talking about rocket science. Um, and, and if we can bridge this very short-term gap, we would be able to make a very good success story out of this. Now, so economics is really quite done. Um, and, and this government, uh, 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 a lot of people in this government are at it and, and they, they are talking about it, they are crunching numbers and they are coming out with plans and models and, and I think uh, uh, we can get economics going. In terms of the social protection program, now this is far more important. We have uh, unemployment increasing among the youth. Now, this government, if, you, if I may be able to say, uh, um, I can go on like this, but please bear with me for a while. Um, I'll, I'll stop in a minute. <laughs> um, this government was, by and large, brought to office by the young of this country. I have no doubt about that. Uh, much, much younger than me, people much younger than me, 18 to 35. And we haven't done anything to that. I haven't spoken to them. I haven't met them. Well, uh, there is a reason for this. Um, so uh, I think I'll have to talk about the smooth transfer of power business uh, to coincide with this. If I talk to them, um, it will be very difficult for me to go on with this smooth transfer of power business. They won't, believe me, they won't, the cry is still the same, off with the head. And it's not, you know, uh, a lot of youth in this country has been very badly done. There's been a lot of injustice. A lot of us have been badly tortured. There's been many human rights violations. And people won't press charges on Hassan Afif, the leader of the MDP parliamentary group. It is getting almost impossible for me now. I am under so much pressure. This is where I worry. Not the economy. To hold on to this thing. And every day I am having to come out, every day I am on the telephone, every day I have to beg these people, please don't do this. Don't go to court, don't go out on the streets, don't do that. Let, let the regime, let the past be past. But when they see it fit to prosecute the leader of our parliamentary group, it's, it's getting almost, almost impossible. So uh, this business of smooth transfer of power is the most difficult thing I've ever, I mean, I haven't, uh, I'm not an experienced man, uh, but uh, uh, in the small time that I have lived, uh, this is getting very, very difficult. I, I, I beg Gayum to move back. I don't, we, we none of us, wants to go ahead with a witch hunt. None of us wants to prosecute him or the former regime. I, I, certainly, I certainly don't believe that there will be any good. Now, you can have a court case. You can have a defendant, you can have a plaintiff, you can have a judge, and you can have the court drama. But will that dispense justice? We've had a country without rule of law and therefore no lawyers no judges, and how are we expect to produce justice out of a hollow system? So in my mind, if we have the democratic process, we will probably be able to dispense better justice. But I am, I, I am a minority now. We are moving towards elections, parliamentary elections, and the man had the audacity to come out and say that he's going to win it all. No, uh, 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 um, basically, it's what I'm suggesting it is 
of the transition of moving from autocracy to democracy or, or establishing democracy in this country. This is the most delicate affair. Uh, many of you might be bankers, economists, and, and so on and so forth. But I, I also see uh, uh, you know, there is a need to study or, or to, to give our attention to this issue of smooth transfer and, and the issue of transitional justice. Uh, somehow we would have to deal with that. Now, uh, um, I was saying um, uh, that the young, I haven't met the vote bank, I haven't met the people who elected me, um, I haven't had a, you know, we've given a pension to those over 65, we've retained the whole civil service um, who were actually a, a, a group of servants, we've retained the whole previous government's power infrastructure and we haven't dismantled it. During the, during the first hundred years of the previous government, when Ibrahim Nasir left and uh, Gayum was installed in power, 432 people were arrested in, during a period of 100 days, all for political reasons. We haven't arrested one and we will not, God willing, arrest E11. Um, we want to identify our target in youth employment is we want to be able to identify at least 5,000 youth from 18 to 35 who hasn't got a job. We want to train them and then give them a job. And this is our, our target, the government's target for this year is 5,000 youth. Now, um, that won't solve us any problems. The amount is too big. We have about, we think, more than 25,000 youth on the streets without a job and on the verge of serious criminal activity, uh, including hard drugs. So we really have to identify them, we have to talk to them, we have to do something with them. Uh, drug rehabilitation is very important. Um, the police force is, is far more important for us not to talk about and not to discuss. Um, we have to change the police force. We have to change, or we have to, let's say, I mean, I, I, I don't know a, a nice way of putting it. You have to train them. Um, uh, and, and you have to have uh, better, better imagination at the top brass. And you have to be able to deal with uh, criminal elements in the streets of Mali, and you can do it. It's possible. Um, uh, this is one area where we would be really requesting assistance, uh, human resources, for a group of people to come and stay in the police service um, for a few years and be able to change the whole culture of policing, uh, uh, look into community policing. Um, part of the problem, part of the resentments and, and part of the reasons why people still want to go for this justice is because uh, the, the police force, for instance, haven't changed all that much. And um, o o of course, I am the, apparently the chief of police or the, the, the man who is in charge of the um, police. And I do spend my time in this police. I have confidence in the police. I know that there are a lot of good people in there. And there are, uh, you know, we have a lot of expertise in there. A lot of very, very qualified people. And they can do a very good job. And in fact, you know, we've only had one murder since we came. This is good for this, you know, this is good for motives. Last year we had eight. Uh, 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 we are trying to uh, understand gang violence. Um, I've told my government to start reading uh, uh, more on gang warfare than anything. A West Side Story would be a good start. That is the romance 
It's, it's, you know, you have to have blood on your hands to be a gang leader. You, people, the youth have this mentality now. To be a leader, you have to have blood on your hands. And it's, you know, uh, it, it, that is why I, I keep saying, you know, West, West Side Story is a good start. We have to be able to understand the young, we have to be able to understand the gangs and the violence that goes with it. Drug dealing. Very sorry, a lot of apparently very reputable people are at it. And we have to be able to move in and address the issue. Now, again, if I, uh, again, all this is uh, um, connected to the business of smooth transfer of power. Violence, drugs, all that is apparently connected to smooth transfer of power and if we move too robustly on drugs, that would affect smooth transfer of power. I hope you know what I mean. If we move more robustly on gang violence, that would affect smooth transfer of power. So it, it, it's a very delicate balance. Um, we also are trying to do a few more things in terms of health and education. Um, our aim is to have a single session. Our aim is to have a good school um, where the student can spend all, this, all, all his or her life in, in school. In the afternoon playing, the morning studying, the night a little bit of mischief. Um, you know, we want to build that school. Um, as we stand now with so much um, constraints and resources, it's difficult. We want to privatize higher education, high schools. We want to build a model where um, 11, 12 and a high national diploma we want to be able to establish about 10 of these schools um, and a high national diploma where the government would give a grant and, and also the government would facilitate a student loan program to top up the grant. Uh, um, and so therefore these schools hopefully would be commercially viable. Um, Dr. Lutfi has drawn up this um, model and um, Lutfi has um, tested or at least we've launched one in Hinnavar. And, and if we can come up with a few, that's, that would really quite ease the pressure on grade 11 and 12 and higher education, ease the pressure on the state. We have to be able to uh, uh, make room for some amount of private schools, only because, not only because they would ease uh, uh, the pressure on the state system, but also you need to give a better choice to parents. Now, um, if we um, consider what's happening now, it's getting late. If, if we consider what's happening now, um, the government is subsidizing even, you know, very wealthy children, very affluent children. As much as the government is subsidizing the malnourished and the poverty, uh, 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 below poverty line children. Now there's no point why um, we should go ahead with, for instance, subsidizing about 20% of the student enrollment. If we can make room for a private education system, we believe that about 20% of the students would opt out from the state system um, and therefore reduce the pressure on the education budget. Uh, Patrice mentioned it was 1.4 million. Strange it was. It's 1.4 billion. Um, um, actually, in the speech, if I now thinking back, I did say 1.4 million. So it's, I was just wondering, that it was a slip. It's 1.4 billion, the budget deficit of last year. It had no relationship with the school. Um, 
the, the, our, uh, one of our education models in higher education is to have a, uh, a, a private uh, or, or public-private partnership so that we can um, come up with these high schools. Um, in terms of um, um, secondary and, and you know, other schoolings, we are also, uh, uh, Dr. Lutvi is trying to um, uh, give out about four or five of the state schools and, and make them uh, private schools, but that involves uh, uh, a handout to the existing students in these schools. So the government should be able to give a scholarship to these students until they finish. And, and so therefore, we are working out on the financial models of these things. Um, in healthcare, again, um, we've introduced a, a health insurance scheme. In fact, we haven't actually yet introduced, no, we haven't yet introduced a good health ins insurance scheme. Uh, the previous administration had a health insurance scheme uh, that we, were, we had to follow. But then we had a closer look at it, and there was no insurance in it at all. Um, um, and, and, you know, and we are trying to find out where the, where the insurance bit is. There is a scheme, um, but we are unable to find out, and, and um, then finally we've, uh, the cabinet, I think, has decided that, well, you know, uh, there were more to it to Madana than just setting out an insurance scheme. You, some of you might have heard that in the previous administration there was an attempt to introduce an insurance firm. And now the, the exact firm is, is uh, um, in court in Malaysia or Singapore. Um, well, and, and you know that's where the insurance scheme affair is. So um, we have to now untangle that and see where the insurance is and then hopefully come out with the insurance scheme. Now the idea is the hospitals to charge and the insurance companies to pay and the government to pay the premium, and the government to ask for a contribution from the people. Now, we would be asking for contributions from the people all the time. All the time. In every single instance. In water, in sewerage, in everything. And I am very confident that the people will understand this. And I am very confident that the people will understand the fact that we can't deliver all these things. I know expectations. Everyone keeps telling me it's a new government and the people would have high expectations. But mind you, please understand that I have met, I have visited more than 120 islands since last November. And I have had very close range consultations with these people and I've told them, no, 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 we can't do this. It's not possible. We can't do the, all these things instantly. We have a plan. This is how we do it. If they can understand the plan, they're happy. If we involve them in the plan, they're fine. So we have to tell them, okay, this is how we are going to do the drainage. Don't ask me for the date of the drainage, but please ask me on how we are going to deliver the drainage. And once we tr start explaining to them, look, you know, what we are going to do is actually there is uh, uh, this resort island right next to you. And the, the here is you. What we, what we are trying to do is connect these two islands in one grid. And, of course, it's a leap on their imagination. But I, it's looking like it's a leap on many imaginations. Um, um, I, my point is, if we are able to tell them if we are able to tell the people that this is how we are going to do it, and if they can understand, if they can be part of the process, then you are therefore dealing with the issue of expectation. Now, you can only do that through decentralization. You can involve them through decentralizing power. Now, this again is a huge hurdle. Male throughout history have consolidated so much power. In a sense, you know, uh, uh, this wasn't one country. The atolls had autonomy. Um, some bright fellow uh, uh, unified the country in the sense. And then 
uh, uh, throughout the last 1,000 years, Mali have gradually consolidated all the power in the seat in Mali. Now, I sit there and trying to give it back to them. And, and um, I'm finding that, you know, it's not only me who is sitting here. There's all sorts of Mali interest. All sorts of Mali interest. I'm fortunate that I am one of them. Um, and I'm also fortunate that I used to be the IMP. And I'm also fortunate that I know I've visited every single of their homes more than twice during the last year. Every single home in Mali. And and, and therefore, um, I can be a little bit um, um, difficult with them and say, look, you have to relinquish power. You have to give it up. It's theirs. And um, we are going through the process. Uh, uh, some say it's uh, not exactly uh, uh, so well defined in the laws or in legislation now. But today, there is a bill in the parliament. And hopefully, the legislation will continue. Um, but we have um, established, through the existing legislations, through the e existing frameworks, we have established seven regional centers, and we want desks and chairs, and, and uh, the, the um, state ministers here always ring me up about infrastructure, about homes, about offices, about transport. Um, but then, you know, uh, we are working it out, and, and we hope that you will have a look at this program, the decentralization program. And uh, I'm, I'm sure that uh, uh, you will be able to contribute towards this program. Agriculture. We have spent so much on research on, of agriculture. Now we want to, there are very many facilities that we have. And, um, and, and many research islands and many very good um, hydroponics projects and, and uh, uh, very hot chilies and uh, very good, in fact. Um, but we want to see if these projects can be handed over to a commercial interest. There is nothing called uh, the, the island community, please. There is nothing called that. But there is an individual who is an entrepreneur who is excellent at it. And there are people who work for them. This is a feudalistic society. And, you know, moving from feudalism to pluralism um, um, is, is quite interesting, actually. So there is, an, uh, there, there, there is an individual, an entrepreneur on the island. If we can bring uh, uh, um, a foreign investor, a joint venture partner, to many of the government projects, agriculture and aquaculture projects, all these projects would be viable. All the projects would be viable, and we can make these projects into investment opportunities. So, thank you very much, um, um, Patrice. All the UN projects, are, if when we start looking at these projects, not as projects, but as investment opportunities, let's say, here is a, uh, if we can parcel them to say, uh, 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 some fisheries cooperation or some um, uh, um, formula banana plantation, private limited, or you know something like that. <laughs> and if we can parcel them, and if we could ask an investor, look, we have the government has invested uh, so many millions in it, and, and it is there. You have all the infrastructure and things are there. And uh, I, I'm sure that we are, you know, we are attracting people who are willing to come and invest in these areas. So we want to transform agriculture from the present um, um, uh, um, you know, playhouse projects to more hardball economic corporate entities. Um, same thing in fisheries, a, a little bit more than that. Um, this country has, or, or at least the government fishery of this country, has relied very much upon tuna. And uh, the government uh, uh, fishery company owns a fair amount of tuna concerns here. Um, the government now wants to privatize tuna and MIFCO to go towards some big investments in aquaculture. 
So in a sense we, sh we want to stop hunting and start farming. Uh, 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 we, uh, we fish one by one and, and our fishermen are convinced that they can fish more than per sailing by one by one. Uh, there's no point trying to discourage them. Um, uh, but they are, we fish one by one and we will continue to fish one by one. But we want to see um, uh, areas where uh, we can invest in aquaculture and therefore more in fish farming. Basically, uh, we want to move from being a hunter-gatherer society to a more uh, settlement people. We have 20,000 people going hunting every day, going fishing every day. 20,000 of them go every day and, and, and come back with their catch every day. And of course, the catch apparently is uh, depleting a little bit. It's coming down. But the, uh, so it's time that we start thinking and we start uh, we, we start uh, investing in more aquaculture. Now, um, so I, I hope I have touched upon most of the areas that we are concentrating upon. Um, and I want, I hope that this uh, gathering would be, I'm sure that it would be very, very fruitful. Um, thank you very much for the UN Residence Coordinator and um, Dr. Shaheed and everyone who has been very instrumental in organizing this forum. Um, I would, if I may, single out the Honorable German Ambassador and thank him um, for all the uh, uh, engagement and, and uh, the strength that he had in believing the reform process like all the other diplomats uh, who were engaged so well in trying to bring out the changes, the peaceful changes of this, in this country. Um, as I said, uh, we have problems, but we are confident that we can overcome that. We are a formidable government. It's going to be very, very difficult to shake us off. We will hopefully continue winning. We will win a majority in the parliamentary elections. We will hopefully win a majority in the local elections coming soon. But we also, before I just finish, um, we are funding only the opposition newspapers. We are not funding the pro-government newspapers. Haviru, Miedu and Afatis. We are funding them. Um, and we will continue to do that. We want to see a more formative opposition. We want to see process in par internal party democracies, in the parties itself. We want to see transparent and active political parties, and we will encourage that. And, but very sadly, I have to say, before I just finished, in 10 years, all the paper of this country will disintegrate because they are already more than 250 years old. I in have inherited a lot of manuscripts in very bad state. And um, um, by trade, I'm a historian. And I would beg someone to please fumigate these and preserve them. It's very important uh, uh, for this country. Um, uh, uh, I, I should finish, but there is um, my, my main crunch, my fundamental issue, carbon neutrality. We are, it's very simple again. Uh, uh, we are having to start from scratch, and there's no point going to yesterday's technology. We can invest in tomorrow's technology. There is no point in investing on diesel machines, um, because we are starting from scratch. We want to build a good grid, and therefore we can. I think um, it's quite possible uh, uh, m to invest I in renewable energy, and I don't think it's I I it would be that difficult to uh, achieve our goal of carbon neutrality. Um, I, I really think this is also quite possible. Um, so um, thank you again. Um, I hope I'll finish it this time. Um, and uh, uh, we'll have a more 
um, you know, um, more, more two-side engagement later on. This is just me talking. Um, and please have a good time in the Maldives. I mean, come on, have a good time in the Maldives. Um, uh, and enjoy the night. Um, I've been told by Dean that he will throw a party tonight in Kudabanos. Um, so we will have a barbecue in Kudabanos. And I, I, I hope to come. And I hope everyone who, uh, who is staying around will stay. Those who have decided to leave tomorrow would also cancel their travel arrangements. And um, have this party tonight. I think it's very, very important to have the party. Far more important than sitting here um, without... Um, um, more closer engagement, uh, it's just simply going to be very difficult. I haven't spoken about uh, um, Islamic fundamentalism and, and, uh, and that, but uh, then you can ask me later on and I will touch upon. If I did go into my speech, I, I probably would have touched all these things, but um, um, uh, um, it didn't happen. Anyway, um, thank you very much and have a lovely time. the opening ceremony of the third meeting of the Maldives Partnership Forum. Refreshments will be served at the foyer outside the conference hall. May I invite His Excellency the President, distinguished delegates and invitees to join the refreshments. We will reconvene in 15 minutes. Me, TVM, Wagutong, Investing, Event.